Hi there, and welcome to a very special episode of the Electronic Cafe, the channel for the lovers of electronic music. Hello, so welcome to a monumental edition of the Electronic Cafe. Um, as you know, with Mark and I have done over 50 episodes. We've been incredibly fortunate to meet some amazing artists um, that have become real friends to the Electronic Cafe. Um, I found every artist we've met so far to be humorous, warm, really smart, incredibly passionate and just brilliant at what they do. Um, and obviously when we got the call to say, yeah, Mr. Wolfgang Fleur and Peter Dougal are going to come on the show, we were beyond excited. Um, you know, for me, craft work are the main reason or one of the massive reasons that I got into music and especially electronic music, you know, without those guys, there would be no house, no techno. And probably most of the bands that came out of the sort of early eighties all confessed that they saw craft work and it changed their whole sort of view on music and created music that they wanted to kind of emulate and drive forward. So we've got a lot to be thankful for, for craft work. Without doubt, craft work are the Beatles of electronic music. As a 15 year old sitting in my bedroom listening to those classic Kraftwerk albums, never in a million years did I ever think that one day I would talk to one of the original members. Um, and Wolfgang Fleur is still the only, um, or oh, sorry, is the only remaining member making music today. And I'm so glad he is. And I'm so glad that he found Peter Dougal. Peter, for me, is an absolute beacon of talent in this industry. Um, and also, do you know what? Just a bloody lovely bloke. But there's so much more to Wolfgang Fleur than just craft work. But we do recognise that craft work does cast a long shadow. Wolfgang Fleur, along with his musical partner Peter Dugal, have released some fantastic music together since craft work. Eloquence, Transhuman with U96, and now the fantastic new album Magazine One. Um, so Mark and I had an hour in the company Let's say one of the founding fathers of Kraftwerk and, uh, and then also a, a musical partner and a genius uh, in Peter that combined have made one hell of an album. Wolfgang is warm, funny, clever and an engaging gentleman and me and Andy were honoured to have the opportunity to spend an hour speaking to him and Peter. But still, in the back of our minds, we still knew that we were talking to a man that had actually been involved in the making of Autobahn, Radioactivity, Trans Europe Express, The Man Machine and Computer World. A true legend. And I won't lie, sometimes through the interview, I was literally pinching myself going, fuck, Wolfgang's really here. And i tell you what, what a man, what a man. I mean, you know, the guy's done it all, um, but he's still got so much warmth, so much compassion for this planet, actually, um, and so much drive to make great music. It was just an absolute honour to spend an hour with him. So, look, I'm going to shut up because I could talk about him for another hour and make a whole episode on just the meeting we had with Wolfgang and Peter. But sit back and enjoy this interview. It's special. Um, it means a hell of a lot to Mark and I, and I hope it means a lot to you, uh, our friends of the Electronic Cafe. Enjoy. So with, uh, with Peter Degal and Wolfgang yeah. Fleur, I don't suppose many people say no to a collaboration, do they? <laughs> no. They <laughs> <laughs> <I> warn them. <laughs> Tasty night packs. Hoping papers bring his cracks. Can't bring 
Someone loves, someone cries. Hey everyone, uh, this is a monumental moment for the Electronic Cafe. Our very first ep episode played homage to Craftwork. And now we have one of the original members here on the Electronic Cafe, alongside his genius of music partner, Peter Dougal. Gentlemen, welcome to Electronic Cafe. It's a real honor to have you both on our show. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And, and Thank congrats. You. Thank you for joining us on your Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah. we've, we've been lucky enough, uh, Peter and Wolfgang, to have a copy of Magazine One. Absolutely fantastic album. Um, really impressed. The first time I heard it, I was in my car and I got stuck in a traffic jam. <laughs> and, that, and, that, I ha and I had... Did. I had two hours. Of I had two hours of listening to it in solid, and it was it blew me away. It's absolutely fantastic. Lovely, that's really kind. Thank you. Thanks. So we did well. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah you did so. all right, my friend. It's good. It's good traffic jam music, isn't it? It's great music for a traffic jam. <laughs> well, yeah, the first is the first time I'm listening to. It. I was confined in my car, and normally that would be oh my god, I'm stuck in traffic. But I was listening to it, and I couldn't believe how fantastic it was. It sounded brilliantly. The production was fantastic. The songs were great. The way that the way that he set out like a magazine, like a, a social commentary on these songs about you know greed and consumerism and everything is just a, a really fantastic uh, concept album. Really, really enjoyed it. We put a lot of work into it, didn't we, Wolfgang? Over the years, many years of of hard work, <laughs> um, lots of back and forth. Um, and I think there's lots and lots of layers in those songs as well. And I think, um, yeah. I think they will reveal themselves over time, you know, as well as well as it as as well as the instant impact of of the songs. Hopefully, for everyone, there will be yeah. lots of layers you can almost like flicking through a magazine, you know. There'll yeah, be lots of surprises. So I found the more I play it, the more I love it, which is always a good thing. It's a, 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 and guys, I mean, you're now. I, I, I we saw you at the Lexington and. Wolf, you were saying that you and Peter are musical partners, which is amazing. How did you guys meet originally? What's the story behind you two meeting? Yeah, that was by chance, or maybe given from someone from above, you know. <laughs> it was a very special day. It was an invitation I had to, on, on, on the internet, I had someone with the name Peter Dugal. I did not know this guy before. And he asked me, um, he knew that I had a music program, a live program called Musik Soldat, Music Soldier, yeah. uh, with, with, um, with dance, danceable uh, music. I'm not, not like a DJ. I'm not a DJ, I must say. But um, he knew that it might be interesting for them because they have, uh, they run uh, every year uh, the Hepton Bridge Arts Festival. And if I would like to play there, and I said, I said, yes. I had some uh, dates uh, free on, on, on that uh, special particular June. I think it was 2016, Peter, right? 16 or 15? 16, yeah, huh? I think it was 16, yeah. 16. Right. And um, yeah, we flew there. My wife accompanied me and it was one of the hottest uh, uh, Junes ever had in England. I think Peter told me the same. <laughs> yeah. And um, nevertheless... We were um, we were greeted by this young man here, this this guy on, on the right picture in his studio sitting, and he he took us from the airport uh, Leeds Bradford in his car in his private car, and we had an hour drive nearly uh, um, through a wonderful landscape uh, over the hills down to uh, to the lovely town of Hepton Bridge, which we have never seen before, and it was straight so charming. He put us into the hotel. The white lion, I must tell you, it was wonderful. And when we came back out, my, my wife uh, took a photo from us. We knew us just one hour. And if you look on the back of the CD, that photo is it. Mm. So yeah. you, you can yeah. imagine, we had just spoken for an hour or so, and we are looking already like friends since years. 
we were on, from the first uh, sight, on the first moment, we felt friendly with each other. So it was, uh, everything was done, everything was said, the chemicals were correct, the humor was correct, uh, the, the, the words were correct. So we felt so comfortable mm. with this man. And I did not know that he was a musician then, but I was I introduced I... to his music very soon, you know. And uh, that was after, after the show we did in that very, very, very hot evening in the in the trades club, and uh, then we uh, got more. I got more information about Peter and his music, and he recommended me to his uh, SoundCloud, and I listened to to many tracks of him, and I got more and more interested because of the soundscapes, not pop music already with vocals in, but soundscapes which really touched me. Some of them were so strong in in, in their music that I asked him if he would collaborate in something, and he agreed immediately. And uh, there was already a track uh, with the name Birmingham. him why Birmingham he said because it's my birth town Wolfgang and my whole family is living there we came originally from India but we live in uh, Birmingham since long and it's his birth town and I said okay then let's do a song on that because I loved it and let's do some lyrics I write some lyrics and let's see who can sing them uh, I was not into singing on in, in that year already all too much and um, when I had done my lyrics, we looked for a singer. And um, normally I take um, Miriam um, Suarez, my singer from Eloquence. And sure. this before, she lives here in North Rhine, Westphalia. She's Spanish, but she, is, um, she was uh, not available in that time. And then I had the idea to ask Claudia Brücken from former um, Propaganda. And she lives in London. And she agreed and said, that's an honor to me. Send me the, the lyrics and the melody. And I sang the, the, the melody in my way. I, sing, I sang then, you know, just that, that she had the melody. It, it was not very attractive. And um, she said, OK, OK, let me do that in the studio of my former partner, of my former husband in London who is uh, the partner of um, Andy McClusky from OMD. He has a fine studio, and that was her um, decision to, to record it there because oh, she had the most trust. Of course, I invited her here into my studio. I have uh, enough uh, technique here because she is very often in Dusseldorf. Her mother lives here, but she, 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 she refused. She said, I must do it there. Otherwise not. So I had to pay that studio. And no problem. I, I paid that studio and she recorded it. And we had that, such a wonderful result, you know. That was yeah. our first uh, collaboration with Peter. Mm. Wow. And then you got Hooky on bass to, on that track as well, Wolfgang, right? That I took think. some longer. We need yeah. an attractive bass. And we had no, no, not, we had a bass. Peter played a bass. But he said, I'm friendly with Peter Hook. Do you know Peter Hook? I said, not personally, but I know that he was from New Order and other bands. He plays this special high bass, correct? And he, he agreed to me and said, yeah, we can ask him, why not? And I said, also, why not? Uh, we can invite everyone um, who is uh, available and says, yes, everything has to be done by, uh, by, by, by fortune and of, of, by love, as you. We do everything only of joy and love, you know? Exactly. And then he said, Peter agrees. So we will get some tunes from him, some melodies. Yeah, it's and a great that's, track. That's what it is now in. And everything came more and more together that at least we have this uh, wonderful and brilliant song. And I learned much about Birmingham because I had yeah. to go to so much dictionaries and dictionaries and everything what gave me um, information about this wonderful city, mm. which I... I must confess, love more than London. I mean, London is a Moloch, but uh, Birmingham is such a mixed up uh, uh, city of, of cultures and societies that's mm. so brilliant, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. um, 
On the other hand, it's Peter's family. We were invited so often that we played, I played very often there before I met Peter in the flapper, for instance. I think sure. it's not more on. And uh, uh, I can remember the Blue Orange Theater and some others. Mm. I learned more and more. And I love this, all these little channels and the uh, the, the, the Brinson Place. What is it called? Brind Brinson Place? Brindley Place. Plum? Brindley, yeah. pl Brindley yeah. Place, yeah. So this area, we went in clubs, we had nice hotels. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty near to that city. So yeah. it could only be a good song, at least. It's on, the track, on, the, on the track Birmingham, there's some great uh, graphics that accompanied the song. I mean, the, the old footage of around the, the ballroom centre and um, it, it, it really worked well in a live environment, having that on the screen behind. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, the thing with Birmingham is that, I mean, me and Wolfgang, we've probably played there more than any other city, haven't we, Wolf? I think maybe five times together, just uh, purely by chance, not because I'm from there or or anything. It's just mm, there's some kind yeah. of gravitational pull about Birmingham that's that we have, and the song seemed to be a bit of a soundtrack to all that as well. And, yeah, I mean, we, we've had lots of adventures in, in Birmingham. And uh, yes. yeah, and the old the old footage you're you you're you're talking about. I mean, obviously that's um, it was obvious often derided in the sixties, you know, be, for being a bit of a concrete jungle, Birmingham, and yeah. you know, and the whole the old bull ring. And they've recently, well, recently in the last twenty years, they've torn all of that down, and you yeah. know, it's all it's all gone, and it looks like any other city aesthetically, but obviously historically, it's it's very interesting place that's often it's overlooked. Yeah. Peter. <laughs> Sorry. And it's your home sound. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's often overlooked. You know, people often talked about it as a place you just drive past when you're going from London to Manchester. You know, and oh, really? you know, but uh, it's it's got such a fascinating history. Obviously, yeah, and for me, it's it's. I, I have a, besides of that, I have a lovely story. I asked also my friend um, Ian, um, Andy McCluskey. I'm friendly with you know to to if he could sing the song and and yeah. invited him before Claudia Brun, and he refused to. Why you know why? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's not very much in love with Birmingham. He's Manchester guy or, or, or Liverpool, yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool, yeah. Liverpool, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So, well, Your album, I mean, there's so much great. What I love about it, there's real, there's there's lots of character in it. So you know, there's the fun song like Billionaire. There's the the song the song Say No, which I believe was based on an essay by some guy. Was it Wolfgang? I don't know. I can't remember the surname. Is it Borsha? Borsha. Wolfgang Borsha. Written in '47. How did that idea come about? Because it's a very powerful song. Yeah. This, this is the most important song to me on the album because, you know, um, I, I talked to Peter, I want to have um, one page in our magazine for literature. So yeah. I'm, I'm very, a big literature fan and I make uh, book readings and chapter readings from this German author because he's um, he has not only the same pre-name as me, we are both Wolfgangs, he's, he died in, in the same year when I was born and he is a pacifist and a humanist as I am. Yeah. So um, I'm, I feel very close to him for everything what he writes and says. I could be his uh, younger brother. So if he was alive, he was he would be 100, 100 this year. So mm -hmm. in, in the whole world, there uh, will be celebrations. And I also did a, um, in, um, a book reading this year in October, uh, last year, sorry, in, in October, um, in a big center church in Dusseldorf. And it was very good uh, visited. And... Um, yeah, the reason behind that is I'm a pacifist since my age of 16. I refused from military services and made a civil service, which was in the 60s, not so easy uh, to get uh, that done in Germany. But sure. we had that law, we had that possibility. And I had a big law uh, uh, case uh, to, to, uh, to agree with, and I won that. And at least uh, I had to go to that service six months longer 
than the military service. So that that was the torture, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it was a good thing. I worked uh, in um, in a hospital in in uh, in in in, in, um, um, in a hospital for uh, people what are on um, diabetes, you know. Yeah. And uh, I met met blood uh, experiences in in the in the laboratory from morning to the evening. It was a hard work, I tell you. I bet. But, it was a, it was a good work to prevent people for anything for illness and so and not learn uh, to work with a gun for anything to kill people at least. So um, that was written in my in in, in my uh, program of my age. Never touch any gun, Wolfgang. And um, I wanted to have uh, some of the lyrics of Wolfgang Borchert. And uh, there is only one thing to do: say no. Was the best of all of them, which I read sometimes. It's a very, very long tale, and I had to choose only some of the statements which are in, which touch me most of them, and which I found the most important to yes. give to younger people as a statement, as a recommendation for their lives. The good thing is that Peter has a friend, uh, this is also a journalist like you, also a colleague of you, but also a musician, and he did an interview when we played London once, I think three years ago, and uh, let Peter uh, tell who he is, this guy. Oh, are we, are we talking about Max, right? Max. Or, or Maps. Maps. Maps? Oh, Maps, yeah. Maps. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Maps. So James, James Chapman, obviously, who is who is Maps. I mean, he's. Yeah. Um, I've been friendly with him for a number of years, really, since the album Vicissitude came out. I don't know if you know that album, and a song called AMA. And I actually ended up doing a remix of AMA for Mute Records, um, because I just loved I, I loved the song so much that um, that's how we became friends. I messaged him and said um, I was cooking at the time downstairs and I often listen to six music while I'm cooking on a Friday evening. And this song came on and it, and it totally blew me away. It was so beautiful, so um, melancholic, but uplifting and introspective and just all the electronics. And so I ran upstairs and I messaged him and we we became friends because I ended up remixing it as a result of that. And um all the food burnt downstairs by the way while i was doing this. <laughs> i was gonna ask i was gonna yeah. ask but we became friends and then um <laughs> obviously the 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 thing with say no and and wolfgang borscher and um the whole the whole puzzle seemed to to be completed by perhaps asking james i maps if mm. he wanted to get involved somehow and he sent him a little um backing track with some some pieces he'd put together, some chords, some bass, some drums, and yeah. I sent it to Wolfgang, and um, Wolfgang immediately um, listened to it and sent me back a message saying this, this, this sounds fantastic. And then it just developed from there, really. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. as we worked it on it, the perfect inspiration for me for that song. Yeah, yeah. 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 It became one of, one of those songs that, um, and then Wolfgang wrote some melodies, and it was just such a beautiful process. That song, Wolfgang, I know, I know you you remember as well as I do. And then we we'd put these parts on it, and suddenly, you know, you know, when you're working on a song and you you start shivering because there's parts yeah. of it that are so beautiful, and you think, yeah, you know, you get in that zone, and you think this is just everything's just come together so beautifully. I mean, the, the choral arrangement at the end really kind of it's a great memorial. I mean, the album was. Mm -hmm. The album's got tracks from you know humor and consumerism and you know mm. politics and and stuff and this and this say no song is such an important song and so relevant today still you know yeah, absolutely it's, yeah. It's and it's worked. timeless it's all it's always going to be relevant and, and it, I know it's it's deeply great, personal to Wolfgang obviously yeah, so it's yeah. great into the album and the core cool end and everything it's just a fantastic piece it's a really yeah. great, really great really memorial. really pleased you uh you picked up on on all of that and liked it for all you know, those funny, Peter, you make a really good point when i heard that track so you know like when i heard love will tear us apart the hairs in the back of my next and then when i heard the guitar riff and heroes the first time mm. when i heard this i got exactly the same thing i was like it just tingled me i was like wow right. it's well, a that's great, great track whatever we are ordered to do asked for or take part in it is an act of humanity to preserve our lives societies and nature instead of destroying them. We all have our own values. For this, we need a soft heart and a strong spirit.
Pete, I just saw on you quickly. So, and I saw your set before uh, Wolfgang came on. Uh, love the music you've done. I, I actually went back home and bought your whole back catalogue on Bandcamp. Oh, so I'm having that because I really loved it. Uh, who's been your early influences? Because you've got quite a bit more of a distinct sort of dancier, inspirational thing. I'm, I'm, I don't want to do you a disservice because obviously you've probably got a lot more influences than that. But, you know, it's, I mean, I've just ordered your new or the re-release of that uh, Something 3 album that you didn't... Oh, yeah, the Byron. Yeah, I mean, I'm... <sighs> I mean, just going back to the Birmingham thing, where, where yeah. I grew up, you know, and obviously we were deep in the Thatcher era when I was sure at my um, formative age of getting into music. And and back then, it, you know, the, the landscape was so scary and so dystopian. You know, there was always this things on TV about the, what to do if there's a nuclear war and, you know, and computers were arriving. And my, I remember all of our parents people of my kind of generation were quite scared about computers and everyone was saying they were going to take over the world and everyone was going to lose their jobs and you know all that kind of thing so there was a very kind of scary um atmosphere growing up and I found that electronic some electronic music I was hearing really kind of it, it was the perfect soundtrack to what I was feeling so uh, very early electronic stuff and obviously at Croftwork I listened mm-hmm to Craftwork when I was younger and all the electro stuff. But um, I, I wasn't only into um, electronic music. I was into all kinds of music, really. And I have five older siblings, so I grew up and they all had different influences. So I was obviously growing up in an environment where I was seeing all the things they were into. And then obviously my parents moved over here in the late 50s from the Punjab in India. So they yeah. were very much into, you know, really beautiful Indian music and film music. So nice. it was just everything, really. Um, so um, I guess, you know, electronic music was just a part of that. And yeah. um, but the electronic music I veered towards was uh, I like elec- I like the real sound of machines, you know, and really clinical kind of clear yeah. um, electronic sound. So that that's what I gravitated towards mm-hmm. when I was younger. So um yeah. I don't know if that answered your question because it does. No, it does. Your, your musical credentials, Peter, are you, you've got a great CV, um, but your Thank big you. track, I, your your big track, I guess, was with Demonic, the Labyrinth track in mm. the in the nineties, which was a huge club rave track. I mean, how, how how did that come about? That was the first one, I guess, that really put you on the map. Yeah, I mean, again, that was um that was a real passion of mine, and because of the, I mean, Wolfgang earlier was talking about this diversity in Birmingham and I grew up in a place called Hansworth which was a kind of quite a rough inner city area you know where there were riots when we were younger and it was very scary place at times to grow up in but it was also really rich culturally and there was so much to learn you know I used to go to Hansworth Park every day and play football and but you'd meet you know people from all over the world there was a big there was a really big uh black community Afro-Caribbean community so reggae was very prominent um, and the the whole sound of uh, bleep and basses, which is what I believe they call it now, which is labyrinth, was was of that of that genre. Um, was very informed by the electronic side, but also the heavy bass that you were hearing around. Mm. So sure. um, yeah, and again, I was I was just really I loved machines, I loved music, so I was just writing this music, and my plan was just to write something with the loudest bleep. I could possibly create, and it took me two days to create that on a Roland D10 for all the nerds out there. And uh, and then uh, you know you'd press it, and the speakers would just go, and uh, and I thought this is this is it. So then, you know, there was no, there was no internet then, so I wasn't aware of it being quite a big track. It's only recently I realised that it was quite a big track. Yeah, you know, I think you got voted one of the the biggest rave tracks of, of the '90s by a few publications, which is yeah, considering the music that was around that time, it's phenomenal. Did it? Yeah, did, I wish, did I'd, it come I wish from... I'd known. I wish I'd known that back then. <laughs> <laughs> write it in your bedroom and just yeah release it and send it out or how did it catch fire yeah so it's um it's we had an atari st 
um, because I just liked computers and I had an Atari C. And obviously the Atari C had MIDI ports on it. And my brothers were into music as well. So they ended up buying um, an Akai S900 sampler, which was yeah. one of the first affordable samplers um, and a Roland D10. So we just had those two bits of equipment. Um, and the Roland D10 was really nice because it was multi-timbral. So you could have, you could play a bass line on it and then you could play yeah pads on it you could play up to eight different parts basically um and it had a i, I still love the d in fact there's still one here in my rack you can probably <laughs> i've got the rack version for posterity because i love it so much and uh and yeah so basically with those two devices you could put all your drums on the s900 and all your um synth sounds on the d10 and trigger it all from the atari st and you know for the first time you could af have an affordable pro yeah. professional set up so that's how it was done yeah nice nice wolfgang i i i read that as a young man you wanted to be an actor so is it so do you feel like as a musician you sort of do you need to be an actor to play a certain role on stage or is it you know what what changed the career from actor to musician that's very that's very similar i think um musicians are all actors that's my belief right every, every person i know <clears throat> who went on stage to make music changed for that time he was on stage. He's, most of them are completely different in their private lives. When they yeah. go back to the to the backstage or privately home, they go to cook or maybe go to to shopping for their mother or anything privately. And on the on the stage they play roles. I played the robot. I played the model, and we were looking good, you know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, it's true. When I was a young man, I wanted to be an actor. My parents did not allow that. I had to do um, different things. They wanted to, to, uh, me to be a good architect, an interior architect, which I also could have been if my career was not disturbed by two young men who knocked at the architect's office where I made a draw, I learned uh, ground plans drawing, you know, and uh, they grabbed me away and asked me for some drumming on their uh, crazy synthesizer music, which was so so uh, uh, enemy to me so 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 uh, unknown and so unusual and anyway it changed my whole life and sure. um i played another role i, I played suddenly an electric drummer you know so i had I had to build the the uh, device for that for my own device uh, for my role for the next 13 or 14 years 15 years to play the electro drummer of a band called Kraftwerk, you know and today I lent my voice for uh, authors, for um, storytellers. I became a storyteller. I became a narration and even a singer. I took some lessons uh, to sing better for this album, uh, the magazine one. And the last album, The Eloquence, I did not sing so much, but I learned more because my label uh, partner from Cherry Red, he, uh, he loved my voice, he said, Wolfgang, please do me the favor and sing more on the next album. Please, please, please. And I said, yeah. okay, please, please me. And I, I gave him the chance. So Peter also said, why not? Um, I was a bit shy with the singing because I sang much when I was young in all my amateur bands before Kraftwerk. I was right. just the drummer, but I had always a microphone from the stand coming parallel inside uh, with the microphone on. And yeah. I always had to sing the second or third voices in the choruses from all your English pop music, which we imitated then. You know, we, we did not do anything else when we were young in the 60s. So we we just copied the English top 10 um, uh, tracks, uh, which we could play, uh, which we could afford with our instruments. And we were good in that. And uh, we played school parties and um, and, and, and fairs and Dusseldorf, on the Dusseldorf teenage fair and uh, private parties and anywhere else. We had a lot of things to do. We were every week and uh, with our tour bus, the Beethovens, that was my first band. That was, everything was a role. And I became more professional in that, the yeah. older I am. And I trained my voice. My voice became deeper and deeper, more masculine. And I had an operation in on, on my thread that put something out and there was more room. You know, I don't know how this organ is the name in English, you know, they put it completely out. You know, the, the butterfly organ there. Yeah. Yeah, it's out. So I take some pills for these uh, for these um, 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 things. Is, it, is that the um, thyroid? Yeah, okay. Thyroid kind? 
And from that on, I had I had a deeper voice, a better voice. So it was good for me with the operation, you know. Amazing. So um, and also I feel more uh, male today than a boy, which is pretty normal, of course. <laughs> and and I had I had some lessons. I did many many readings. I must uh, inform you, and uh, this gave me more professionalism in in reading, in book readings, in story readings. I learned it really, and I do it well because when I make readings in front of for artists uh, from from audience, some of them come sometimes afterwards to me and shake hands and said how good that was, how uh, entertaining, informative, and and there some ladies had tears in their eyes when they wow. came to me afterwards. Mm. So good was that, and that's something new for me to uh, get acknowledged with my own voice even yeah, speaking or singing, you know, but yeah. all is a role which I give to me. I have to do this. And when I go into a track with Peter, maybe, or some other uh, who I did collaborations with, and I am inspired with this from a soundscape, maybe only a soundscape, which is some kind of a set of, of a film set of a, I have to write the script and I am the actor inside. Yeah, yeah. That's a role with, which I give to me. When I go into it, it must absolutely um, um, what, professional. I must be really acknowledged that this is the person uh, whom I lend my voice. And sure. you can hear it best, I think, and um, say, no, I want to be Wolfgang Borchardt himself. Yeah. I lend him my voice as long as I live. Yeah. I want to be that he is heard everywhere where I am. And in billionaire, I want to be this special person and think you have an idea who that is. <laughs> yeah. Because in, in in the track Best Buy, there's a little there's a little scene in, in between which is like yeah. you playing both the parts. Um, like it? Yeah, it, it's really Love it. It's, it's really it. clever, it's really both really of them. Broken tea, coffee and free, Milky Way, you taste and stay. You taste and stay. You taste and stay. You taste and stay. Both yeah. I spoke both roles. And I have a voice changer. I made one uh, of the voices uh, deeper and the other higher. And I panned them. One is left, one the other is right. They speak together and they have the choices of these uh, special offers, you know, and they talk to each other. How would they save their money, you know? But in the end, they wonder if they really needed that. What they, yeah, of course not, but it was so cheap. It was so cheap. And then the, the, the shop boss in the, in the back is laughing about them because he, he reached his goal, you know, because they bought. It's great. It's great. And, and you mentioned a word earlier, Wolfgang, about collaboration. I mean, you've worked with some friends of ours, like Tiny Magnetic Pets. Uh, I discovered, uh, I got him, a guy called Jörg from the band New Men. And yeah. uh, he sent me a, a, a copy of the album. And I saw a picture and I said, hang on, that's Wolfgang in the middle of you guys, right? So it's Correct. great that you're working with. What for you makes a great collaboration? What, what's, what, what do you look for? If the sound um, escape. The music yep. is touching me in any way, you know. And if I know the person in 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 um, if I know someone personally, it has to do with his character, with his personality. Oh. And if the chemicals are between us, if the level is correct between us, if we yep. like each other, that's a very important thing. I could not work with someone who is far from me, you know, and we 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 cannot shake hands and. Uh, at least I, I must not embrace everyone all the time. But anyway, it has to be a, a close thing with the head and, and the heart, you know. Yeah. So as Sophie Scholl says, we all have we all have our own values. For this, we need a soft heart and a strong spirit. So this is very important: soft heart, strong spirit, and this is why we did say yes. Brilliant. So, so with uh, with Peter de Gaulle and Wolfgang yeah. Fleur. I don't suppose many people say no to a collaboration, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> I warn them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you keep, I mean, I know, I believe, and again, I, I, you guys can tell our audience, but there's there's more magazines potentially down the pipeline, like a magazine too. 
Is that is that correct? Is there more to, uh, yeah. another magazine or more editions to come? Yeah, the thing is that we did we did too much songs for one album, and we were suddenly on on the list of uh, twenty four or so. Wow. Um, yeah, because we had five years work together. Yeah, because sure. of mm. Corona, the last three years were good for us, at least, that we had not no chance to travel, no chance for appearances on stages. So we were isolated in our homes. And uh, there was only one thing to do, make music, you know. And um, the good thing is that we knew each other from the right moment on, and we both had time. So um, why not making music and more tracks and more tracks? Yeah. I had already done some uh, collaborations, ready done with the U96 uh, guys from Hamburg. Yeah. Hayo Leverance um, for the transhuman thing. And uh, I did some more with them, which are not on their record, but on my record. So they are already done for this Magazine One album. And there come three others on the Magazine Two album. Awesome. And Magazine Two, I can really inform you, it's nearly done. It's wow. now 7 to 5% ready. So we have only to record two further songs and we have a fine other next album with nine attractive tracks together. Amazing. And, and I tell you more, even more, there will be also a magazine three album. You wow. know what is on that? Interesting and attractive remixes, dance mixes and everything. What we do with um, uh, remix competitions we do with the friends and musicians we know. Like. So we, we give a competition uh, that will be announced on the uh, Electronic Sound magazine next month, I think in March. Yeah. Uh, they bring an article about our album and I get my first uh, title picture in my life. Ah, I'm so <laughs> proud. <laughs> long overdue Wolfgang long overdue yeah, they promised me I know I know I know Mark Rowland he's a, he's such a nice and uh, he's a fabulous guy. And he said, um, would you not do that again? Because we did it already with an Eloquence album, with this, um, and it was really, uh, um, they, they took it, they grabbed after uh, the stamps, the whole stamps of uh, Pleasure Lane then. Yeah. And I think I got nearly 100 remixes. Can you believe that? Wow. That's a pile. wow. <laughs> and I, I had, my first choice was my own choice to, um, to sort out 20 of them. And these 20, I took uh, to all my friends and to some of musicians and uh, partners and uh, my private friends. We made a huge party with lots of a, a big, big um, buffet with all the nice uh, canapes and lots of drinks, you know, in a big flat from them, not in my, in a little bit smaller. And we made a party until three in the morning to listen to these 20 tracks. Everyone got a sheet of paper with many, many points uh, to um, to sign on what he likes more on or better, and he gave a note at the end on the paper. And uh, when we were done, we we I think we made three courses for all of the tracks. We had at least three chosen of the best, and one, on two, and three, or five I think would be um, to um, to publish on the next record, and that was on Eloquence album two with a double CD and one yep. CD with all these. Uh, incredible remixes incredible results and i like this so much that we do it now again on the magazine album with the track magazine so the title track for all of that read all about it yeah <laughs> ask, hear all about it you know so um we want to do that again and this time the price is uh, to be published the winner on the magazine two as the first track because every magazine album must have a magazine track for the start That's the plan. Are you allowed to say when you expect Magazine 2 to be out or when do you think it'll be out or is it still in the pipeline? It is in the pipeline. We have not yet spoken about a date, but my goal is the same date as this year, every time the 4th of March. 
also the third, fourth of March 24 then. Amazing. Okay. And we'll book you in same time next year to have the same chat <laughs> yeah. about, 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 magazine, about magazine too. <laughs> Every year, okay. we'll be okay. I vote on you. We'll be here for a magazine 10 in 2032 with you. We'll, we'll still be here, okay. Not willing, not willing. So, yeah. Peter will have white hair then. You all, yeah. me, me not, because I paint my hair since 10 years. Oh. I will always be the same, yeah. I can't do that, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) At least you can still paint yours. Anyway, the best. (laughs) So there's some fantastic tracks on Magazine One. There's a brilliant track with Midjur, which is probably the most song-based track on on the album, I would say. Um, You've got you've got Night Drive, which has got amazing rhythms on it, which does hark back to your Trans Europe. or autobahn it's got that rhythmic rhythm which is like sounds amazing and there's a lot of humor on there i mean electronic sheep i think the line that stood out for me was do robots dream of electric sheep that's a that's a really it's a really funny line to have having that song i mean uh you guys must be incredibly proud of this record and really excited of it being released on the 4th of march you know how that who uh, who who uh, well, i have that from no. the fans, that question no from the manager of Carl Cox. <laughs> so that is the whole thing, how it started. It came by the manager of Carl Cox. That's oh, really? Alan Schulman. Alan Schulman uh, uh, got in touch with me to invite me for a show in 2020, in June, um, at the Printworks in London, together with William Orbit and Rusty Egan. And uh, contracts were already done, and then came this virus, and we had to postpone everything. So it was cancelled, but we kept our contact. And he said, Wolfgang, I must, uh, I must inform you, my, uh, my artist is Carl Cox. I, I, I said, I know. I, I, he's crazy, lovely. Uh, he's so funny. And I said, he, he's very much admiring your music. And he asked um, if I should ask you, if you would think uh, to make a collaboration together, I said, yeah, absolutely invited. We are just producing an album. And um, he should send me something to inspire me, just a little soundtrack. He is not from the pop music. He makes, uh, I would say, more, more disco going, you know. It's not that techno what others do, but it's very uh, much uh, to celebrate dancing, dancing. And he's so movable. It's so funny, and always laughing and smiling, such a positive person that's why i like him nice. i have never met him in person but i would like to and we will have the chance this year i think but um we waited we waited i said to alan schulman please send, tell your partner uh, your, your artist to send us something and it needed some months i would say and i did not believe anymore in this but suddenly we had three little youtube uh, videos or something what he took uh, on on his mobile how he yeah. built in his studio and with a question, would you think so? Or would you think that? Or that way? Just yeah. uh, to have a little bit more um, safeness in what, in what direction we could go. He was un- unsure, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, he just videoed right. himself jamming, didn't yeah, he? He, he, was, gone, he, yeah. Was, yeah, he? Yeah, he was a bit unsure to work with a former craft worker, if that would be fine for us. And it was, it was, I really must tell you, and especially the second from the three, we have uh, thought that we have decided together, Peter and I sent everything to Peter as well, because he's my partner. What do you think? What would fit best? And we've chosen for that trick, and we, we wanted to have uh, the stem, the stereo stem from that. Oh, that was, that was a crazy thing. That was difficult to get. Um, you know, it was only a mono uh, music, underlined and I separated it from from the video and said just that mono uh, file to Peter and I said if we don't get it and he did not answer anymore then and I asked uh, Alan Schulman uh, several times can we please have the stamps tone by tone or maybe um, uh, um, a a stereo for uh, for Peter that he can rebuild it and said Peter okay no problem I can make uh, a, a special track from that, um, um, Peter. But what did you do? Can you you can uh, explain that better? as more the technique. Yeah. So I think what probably happened is because Carl was just you know jamming live on his various boxes. 
it might have been very very difficult for him to reconstruct that stem exactly you know right. so um yeah so wolf sent me the the mono track from the video so it's basically just him holding a camera and filming himself you know yeah and uh i mean the the kind of processing you can do now with with noise restoration uh uh restoration software um is is phenomenal so um i was able to take that and then basically take a fingerprint of the background noise and then apply it to the track and and remove the background and the air almost the air you know and then you could kind of bring the the audio more into focus and bring it right to the front so in the end it was it was it was pretty good wolf right so um we got it sounding really really tight and focused so um yeah it was i don't, I don't think that would have been possible even five years ago but now it's it's a lot it, you know, yeah. especially especially with artificial intelligence and all these techniques, you can really, yeah. really push the envelope. Yeah, we, we had a pseudo uh, pseudo stereo track then, which I, yeah. I was flabbergasted how about reading that suddenly that um, that sounded, and I saw what Peter can do, you know, and uh, I got more and more pride of him that he can do such things, and it's very uh, valuable for me working with him. Yeah. I'm easy going, just brainless. People might be scared of me, but I am nice and I am tree. Call me robot, this I like. I'm washing your electric bike. I dream of the electric sheep. You wanted to have an, an answer on that question, how the title came on. And uh, during we were thinking about how can how can we work with that uh, track, you know, with that little soundscape from maybe two minutes only or, or less. Um, the manager uh, had the last question just on, 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 on the sub, uh, a sentence of one email. Just one question, Wolfgang. Do robot, uh, do, do a robot stream of electric sheep? It was the question. He wanted to make a joke, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a great oh, line. It's that great hit line. me. That hit me really, and I said, "Thank you, sir." That's the title track. <laughs> Electric cheap, yeah. It kind of came from him, you know. It was just an inspiration, and I told people, uh, uh, Peter, we write now a song about electric sheep. Ah, he said. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait for the lyrics. I asked a little robot what he can do for us. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I can't wait for yeah. people to hear this album because no. like, the diversity and the subject matters of each of the songs are, are well, fantastic and people will be absolutely blown away by it. Are you planning any more, any more shows like you did at the Lexington? A few? Many. Yeah, we have a lot. We many uh, originally we had to start on the fourth of uh, February our promotional uh, magazine one tour, but uh, the first two concerts were cancelled because of uh, too much Corona and yeah. too less too less ticket sales. But we start now originally one month later on the fourth of uh, March when the album comes out. It's the same day, and sure. let me see on my plan. Bristol, Bristol, right? Yeah. Bristol, that okay. Just one word, just one word for Carl Cox. When you have that printed paper, that um, pictorial, the yes. PDF, you you leave on that page uh, about uh, the sheep, electric sheep. Yeah. You see Carl Cox in his studio where he shows his hand to us. That was a scene, the last scene of... Oh, of right, okay. That's original in his studio where he just played that track for me. Original wow. only for me. He did it play only for me, for no one else. <laughs> I was proud of that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And oh, yeah, yeah. you're doing London as well, Peter. Do you know? Or I know you're doing Brighton. We will play in London. I'm sure we played often in London. Not only the Lexington, the garage, and, uh, uh, and under the bridge. Um, oh, well, I played often in London, and, and will be more often. And we will do, of course, um, restart. That pro uh, that that um, that project with the um, with the print works, you know. Yes, a bit more. Bit we, we, will, we will do bigger ones, I'm sure, in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it is ten cities uh, which are on the plan, and many 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 others which uh, are postponed from twenty uh, twenty uh, twenty and twenty twenty one. So many 
Schultz. The, clo- the closest one to London that's in the plan at the moment is Guildford, but there's nothing okay. in London planned just yet. But all right, buddy. Places. Well, we'll we'll be there again. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. hundred oh, percent. Yeah, it's a great show. And it's just great to see all that. All, that's all cl- uh, small clubs, but I also I love club touring. Mm. Uh, even better than big uh, festivals. It's that's okay. Festivals are are good because of the of, of the bigger fee, you know. And if I think economically is is it's okay, but the clubs are better for me and for Peter. I think we mm. love the, the close uh, yeah. to be close to the audience, you know. And the sounds better as well. I think I, I like correct. Sound yeah. is better, and you know, if, if in big festivals there are, there are hundreds of artists, friends always. Uh, a big traffic on the stage and so many problems can appear, you know. I mean, it's always a good weekend, isn't it, Wolfgang? We normally do a Friday oh, and a Saturday, yeah. so we'll meet on a Friday, we'll have yeah. dinner together, and we'll go. Our we're traveling. after parties, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> party after the show and then there's uh, some friends with us usually and, and all the traveling is is great, we love it. Oh, awesome. Now we'll definitely come and see you guys again. Yeah, let's, let us know. I mean, uh, and Wolfgang, um, could you please indulge us for a little while? Because we are, we've been musicians ourselves. We're massive Craftwork fans. I saw and, that picture. Yeah. And, well, yeah. No. <laughs> and you, you were in Craftwork for that period when they produced all of those iconic albums um, that, that were so ahead of the curve, so ahead of the game. How the hell did those albums get made without MIDI, without Simpty? without computers. I mean, they're just perfect electronic albums. Yeah, in that case, I, I would um, direct you the best to Carl Bartos, but he's not under our uh, guest list tonight um, because he's more the songwriter. With, with, when he made his um, writing lessons uh, together with, uh, especially with uh, Ralf Hütter, I was mostly not uh, with them in the studio. I was asked later to record my drumming. So, um, it was, of course, uh, very, very spare, very um, simple to do. We recorded on tape machines. Yeah. On tape machines. Can you? We had a big one, a 24 track, and, and, yeah. and, and uh, at least also um, a desk, a recording desk in our, in our studio or rehearsal room. And everything had to be recorded live, you know, singing, drumming with my electronic trumpet sport. And, uh, until the sequencer came up, you know, the sequencer made me work less because at least uh, everything could be programmed and um, the live drama was no more needed. And that was my chance uh, to quit with them and to uh, invent myself completely new. Yeah. When I left them, I needed 10 years to think about my life. Music was 10 years not in my life. I made furniture design. Because I was uh, in my youth, I was uh, trained as a carpenter, and uh, I learned, uh, I studied uh, the, the interior design and anything, and I, and I had a workshop for furniture design with two partners for mm-hmm. six, nearly six years, and we were pretty uh, uh, successful here in Düsseldorf and uh, the surrounding. But anyhow, music came back, and suddenly I had a record contract from EMI Cologne on my desk when I had my first uh, drafts uh, for the Tampa album. The Tampa album was something new to me because my partner then was Andy Toma from Mouse on Mars. He helped me to co-produce this album. He was very important to me, like Peter is today. And uh, Andy, Andy um, brought me to the microphone as the storyteller. He invented it. And he saw what I can do, and all my melodies, which are on Time Pie, is also something that was completely new in me. And um, he said, it, it sounds some, sometimes as it is from, made from Kraftwerk. So I, I told him, I am not changed into a Kraftwerker since I go, went to them. It was already before in me. So the romantic melodies, that was something which... Um, which I loved in Kraftwerk because uh, it was already in me. I come from a family with a very vivacious mom. My mother was very beautiful and she danced. She had she made parties with my papa all the all, every weekends. There were no clubs. I, I mean, in the fifties, after the war, you know, I'm I'm, I'm born in uh, forty seven and in Frankfurt and in Koblenz where we lived on the River Rhine. Always, it's romantic area outside and a fantastic landscape. 
everything is um, teaching. Everything, everything is, um, um, is is building out uh, for younger people. And I was anyway always a, a romantic boy, and so the the music of Kraftwerk was that what mostly inspired me to stay with them. You know, the technique is the other thing. Um, of course, when I had invented that and um, built that electric trumpet board with Florian together, it made me proud of something doing for the future. I would yep. not play drums with them, original drums with synthesizers. It, that would not fit for our first uh, appearance in, in, a, in a German TV show, Aspekte. That is the, the most famous uh, culture show in Germany, still on, by the way. And uh, Aspekte was something where we three, still without Karl, went uh, into the uh, TV the first time. You can see that on YouTube, again, it's still yeah. there. It, it looks very, a little bit, let us say, um, like a sleeping pill or boring, a bit <laughs> low, a bit crazy. <laughs> we look very unsure. We are, we are not used to be filmed. But the camera man with the big cameras of that time focused mostly on my trumpet spot that looked so strange, so yeah. alien. Yeah. Not the organs. They looked, a synthesizer looked like a Philly Porter home organ that looked so usual, you know. And Florian played a side flute. That's also not very futuristic, uh, by the way. But anyway, um, <laughs> they showed mostly me. And that made me proud. And suddenly that historical click in my head, Wolfgang, this is the future of the drumming. And the whole music became more and more electro, uh, electrified from that time on. So um, the melodies was that what kept me in. And that is why um, uh, Trans Europe Express is my favorite album since then. It's the most um, melodic and uh, the most romantic album. And um, yeah, I transport something from, from this. I don't have to do much. It's in me. Uh, when I add uh, melodies to our current music, which I produce with Peter, it's there. I yep. don't have to think long which melody could fit in there when we need a, re a repeat of the choruses yeah. or something, or in a bridge something to to, 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 to lead over to some another part. Um, it's it's very very uh, fast. I have it in my ear. And I play it with my little synthesizer and find a fitting sound there. It is not a synthesizer with all these uh, programmed Kraftwerk sounds. I have to find them myself, which is my uh, taste of sound, you know. Sometimes yeah. they could sound like something like that. But, you know, every synthesizer today would say, oh, this is Kraftwerk, because we started with synthesizers, you know. Sure, mm. sure. Your drum sound was very uh, iconic in the... You know, you can hear it in hip hop. You can hear it in, you know, all different types okay, of music. Nice. From, you know, that that electronic drum sound that you yeah. invented has transpired into so many. That was a Fafisa rhythm ten, a Fafisa rhythm ten sound with the transistor transistor sized uh, sounds, with these little knobs on side, which which yeah. I just in the studio not with my team. I did point boom chuck point boom. <laughs> so, we rebuilt that to play it um, with metal sticks or metal plates, you know. Right. At least it was these sounds, you know. And I played only the, the Mercy beat from Ringo Starr. That is what I could do best, you know. Very, very minimalistic. That was my chance with them. Sorry, you're going to say something, buddy. Yeah, I was just on the subject of melodies. So when Wolfgang, I mean, obviously Wolfgang refers to himself as the drummer from Kraftwerk, and uh, obviously he was. Um, but when you, when Wolfgang sends me these melodies, you know, sometimes he'll say to me, right, I have, I'll, I'll come up with a melody for this, and then I don't hear from him for about three days, and then I'll get an email with a melody on it, and I think <laughs> it's this is absolutely beautiful. You know, this is everything that um, is inside. Wolf, and I, th I think sometimes um, 
sometimes too kitschy. Come on, tell me. Yeah, no, no, no. We don't always agree, do we, Wolf? You know, we, we've had our, we've we've not agreed on everything. You know, we'll have to. But that's we're artists, right? And you know, right. I mean, um, I think uh, you know, I'm not just a yes man because we have to we have to produce something that is beautiful and is going to be amazing and people are going to love forever more. I mean, that's just the, the, the rule that we have. So, uh, but yeah, no, sometimes, you know, we don't agree on things, but uh, for on say no, for example, or Birmingham. And then, you know, I mean, I will, I, I will try melodies sometimes for ages and then Wolfgang will send it and I'll say, that is it, you know, <laughs> and it will just yeah, come yeah. through and it's there and it's beautiful. And, and it, and it, we'll go back to that moment where, you know, the kind of hairs on the back of your neck kind of stick up and you just think mm. we've got it, you know, we have it. So, um, but I think I just wanted to make that point about the melodies because, yeah. you know, it really is, they're all over the record or all these, sometimes the melodies are only three or four notes, right? Wolfgang, because as we say, it's not what you do play. Sometimes it's what you don't play. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, it just it just worked so well. You know, they they sometimes are just the final glue for something that we've been working on, and it suddenly all fits into place. So on the on the I, new album, do you use a lot of like hardware stuff, or do you, is there a lot of stuff software stuff that you use out of? Um, it's a mixture of both, really, but it's mostly it's mostly software, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's mostly um. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly just really. I like plugins that use kind of the zero delay feedback filters, things like Monarch by Native Instruments. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's brilliant. And I think some of the Moog emulations, like there's one called the Legend, which is which is fantastic. I can't yeah. remember the name of the company. Um, Synapse Audio, I think it is. They make some really beautiful stuff. <laughs> um, and then I use a lot of uh, Acoustica stuff for processing. I don't know if you know Acoustica Audio, but they're very very kind of um i mean it's amazing but it's based on digital uh dynamic convolution so you can basically emulate old you can emulate the character of things by sampling it in a dynamic way it's very complicated you use a lot of horsepower uh but so i've got an old neve 88 desk that every wow. channel's been um acousticified on and then you can apply all those emulations and you can you can mix tracks like that i mean it's very convoluted but it leads to a real you know, I kind of, yeah. you know, it does take a long time, but uh, it's worth it, you know, so, and then... The final question, then we wrap it up, but um, there's a beautiful story when you, you met Florian um, just before he yeah. passed away. Mm. Um, it moved me. Would you share that story again, please? Yeah, in 2016, I had a celebration in a, in a famous brewery house in East Street in Dusseldorf, where we have been with Kraftwerk when we were younger, always because it was uh, pretty uh, close to Klinklang Studio in uh, uh, Oststrasse. So uh, we went often there because they had wonderful eat and drinks, especially the Dusseldorf brown beer, old, old beer we liked. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd love to go there still today. And I had a celebration in 2016 in, in a summer day. It was some days before my birthday. So um, it was again hot and we drank some uh, with my friends. And uh, my wife um, stepped with, with her foot under, under, under the table on my foot and said, May Wolfgang, I think Florian is sitting behind you on the next table. So he was in my back, they said. And uh, the other said, she's right, he's there with two ladies. And uh, the more I, th I thought we haven't seen for t 30 years, I think, I thought, uh, how can we do that now? How can we fix now our issues we had some time before we are old men now and maybe a bit more wise? In that moment, I had a hand on my shoulder and I did as I was shrieking. I looked up and said, Florian? And he said, Wolfgang, and I stood up and it was so pretty suddenly in that moment. Um, it was really touching me and he, I think him too. And uh, I embraced him suddenly. I took my old Florian in my arms, put my arms around him and took him nearer and whispered in his ears, well, thank you for your wonderful song against the pollution in the oceans. Your song saved the fish 
is really touching me. It's so good that you're still making music. And he said, yeah, you too. I have I have read that and I heard your Eloquence album. And I said, I'm in the process at the moment uh, for making some something new. Would you mind? He said, we'll do that. We'll do that, Wolfgang. And then I said, guns, uh, very close to his ear with my mouth, I said to him silently, Florian, thank you for this wonderful 15 years we had together. Oh. And he said, these were the best, Wolfgang. Oh. And that relieved everything, what had done with our childish issues we had. It was of my book, you know. Sure. They didn't want me to write a book, but I did. It, it was my past. My book was my book and not theirs. Everyone could have done, like Carl has written a book. It comes out in England this year, by the way. Um, okay. It's pretty. I have already written, uh, read it, you know. So he can he can um, report more about the um, recording process. But with Florian, it was wonderful that we had this forgiving date, you know, this wonderful yeah. moment of forgivings. And then everything was fine, you know. Mm -hmm. I did not know in that moment that it will not appear a work uh, together in collaboration because he was uh, already very ill. He did not tell me that. Mm. And uh, the next year he died. So that was very a uh, shock to me. I just want to say, look, thank you for being part of one of the most influential bands and changing our lives musically. You, you yeah. guys really did. But also going beyond craft work and continuing to make great music with Peter today. You know, um, and may you both continue to do so for a long time. What you've got is very special and we love it. So thank you. And we just look forward to all the music and say, and congratulations again for a stunning record. And we really appreciate thank your you. Time. It's been an absolute honor for us. Thank so you. So we will continue in that, in that role. With, thanks that I met Peter. He's my partner now and thank yep. you for the future. So we do what yeah. we can do. I think um, we have done very well. And yeah. it was. It was only joy and from love. Son sonically, it sounds fantastic, especially if you're in a traffic jam in your car. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> or any time in your life. That's great. Peter, yeah. thank you for, uh, as well, my friends. Really great to spend some time. And uh, yeah, we'll come thank and you. see you guys playing live soon. And Peter, yeah. let's drink you at some point. Yeah, yeah. We look, we look forward to seeing you at the next one. And all the yeah. best with the channel. It's great. Love it. I love all the work you do and the passion you put into it. It's it's fantastic. So well, when we like this, it makes it easy, mate. So thank you. Thank you both for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, okay. And we'll catch thank up you. annually every time you bring in a magazine. Out. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank, you. Awesome, thank, thank you, Peter. You. Speak Bye. soon. Bye. 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 The question is money. I own money. Money was always in my family. I'm a billionaire. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the amazing interview that Mark and I had with Wolfgang and Peter, we thoroughly did. Um, we've got another big name to announce soon, hope very soon, and it's massive. So stay tuned, keep watching Electronic Cafe. We've got more good stuff to come, more great ideas coming through, and we're trying to get more big artists to come on and for you to get to know them better. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. You know, Our aim is to make ears happy around the world. And that's what we're going to do. So um, listen, take care, stay safe. And Mark and I will see you soon on the Electronic Cafe. Bye bye for now. Thanks for watching. And a special thanks to Wolfgang Fleur, to Peter Dugal, and also to Matt at Cherry Red Records. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye.